welcome all this is out microprocessors and microcontrollers are amazing integrated circuits these are the heart of computing system based on CPU a lot of development and increased complexity on these devices during past years to improve their performance and processing power. These devices are around us everywhere performing the intelligent work inside the control system of many machines. Intel 4004 CPU which I don't have it at this collection was a 4-bit processor executing 92,600 instructions per second while modern CPUs today can execute billions of instructions uh, per second on this CPU and MCU collection I am missing many important other ICs but this is what I managed to collect therefore let's go through some of them here we have the C8080A CPU this was a drop-in replacement for Intel 8080 the 8-bit CPU here we have the 8085 CPU. This processor is very good to start learning about the fundamental components of microprocessor in general. And this was used in many instrumentation devices and control units. ATC86 is a version of 8086 CPU. This was the first member of x86 microprocessors with 16-bit architecture here is the famous z80a cpu uh, was widely used during the 70s this is an 8-bit microprocessor 8051 and 8031 both are microcontrollers 8 bits uh, from Intel both are widely used for microcontroller applications 8051 is equipped with internal ROM while 8031 can use external ROM only 8751 is same family but this one equipped with erasable EEPROM so the program can be erased a new program can be easily burned here we have the very famous MC68000 microprocessor from Motorola this is a 32-bit microprocessor this powerful a processor was used in many control systems plus Macintosh uh, machines CBD1802 uh, microprocessor from RCA was used as general purpose microprocessor big series microcontrollers from microchip company here we have the PIC16 F877 and the popular 18 pin PIC16 F84A. These are equipped with internal flash program memory so they can be reprogrammed anytime. PIC microcontrollers widely used for industrial applications and hobbyists as well many supporting application notes are available online uh, for this one 
plus free development tools. 80 Mega 16 from Atmel, part of Atmel's Mega AVR family. This is a high performance 8 bit microcontroller and similar to microchip there is a lot of online tools and notes for developing Atmel microcontrollers HD63B03XP this is 8 bit microcomputer IC from Hitachi here we have the Intel 286, 386, and 486 uh, CPUs. With 386, Intel started implementing 32 bit CPU. MC68040 is 32 bit microprocessor by Motorola. This is part of Motorola 68000 series. Starting with very well known Pentium series generation. So here we have Pentium 3, Pentium 4, and what's known as Pentium 200. All were widely used for desktop and laptop applications for Windows. This is here is V25 CPU from NEC. It is 84 pins microcontroller was widely used in many instruments and control devices. MC68HC11 is popular 8-bit microcontroller from Motorola. ATC535 is 8-bit general purpose microcontroller from Siemens. Athlon is high performance microprocessor family from AMD. Widely used for Windows application as well. Intel Xeon processor was developed for servers and workstation applications. We have here also Intel Celeron processor and AMD Simprom processor. You might wonder what's this little chip doing here? In fact, this IC looks small in size, but it is so big in terms of function. This is ARM based microcontroller running with internal integrated ARM Cortex processor. These devices are high performance, very high power efficient, using reduced instruction set computer architecture. That's why this is referred to as system on chip. In this part here, Let's have a feeling on how these incredible devices execute the work by simulating a simple program of adding two numbers. These steps may vary from system to system. Before running the simulation, this is a brief explanation about the components. So here we have the microprocessor. This is the heart of the system. The processor will need some permanent memory to store the main program. This can be ROM, EEPROM, EEPROM, or flash memory. It needs also temporary storage memory. In this case, uh, the RAM. We need some input output ports to interface the signals from peripheral devices uh, in this setup reading from keypad and writing to LCD display. We have the address bus 
carrying the address information to locate the required data. We have the data bus. Through this, the required data can be read or delivered to destination. Chip select signal to select the target IC to be read or written by uh, the CPU. Control signals. In this setup, we have read or write command driven by the microprocessor. Some other control signals not shown here for simplicity. The program here is to add 5 plus 9 equal 14. Every step is shown as description of the particular operation. So this is not directly the opcode. I found showing it in this way is much simpler as the opcode may differ per processor type. Few things to highlight. When the bus is active, it becomes active to all the chips because it's common anyway but the only selected chip will respond however during this simulation I only show the bus active to particularly selected chip just to avoid any confusion the CPU will issue the address bus and the chip will be selected through the decoder then the control signals to read or write as per the required operation will be activated and data will be placed on data bus accordingly. The programmer do not need to worry at all about all this bus activation and timing. The microprocessor is going to deal with this automatically by the help of control unit and bus interface therefore the programmer just need to write the code in terms of what operation to be performed from where to read and where to write the results so no complication in this aspect you will notice during the simulation that before every operation the CPU will read the program memory because it needs to know at every step what to do and this is important concept uh, to be made clear that the CPU just execute the instructions written in the program sequentially uh, through a loop and then going back to the beginning of the loop therefore if I miss to specify what to be done in any step of the program the system will crash at that point we can start the simulation now just relax and watch the steps and data as they move around
This is the end of video part one of this topic. At video part two of microprocessor principle and architecture, we will zoom in to see what is going on inside the CPU and more. You can get the link to video part two at this video description below. Thanks and all the best.